Hello everyone, today on Scottish Memories we are chatting to Colin McCready. How are you all? Hope you are all happy and healthy and well out there wherever you are. Just before we get started today, if you haven't already, please remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment, and if you listen on podcast, remember to subscribe and leave a rating as well. That would be absolutely brilliant. But today, we are chatting to actor Colin McCready. Colin has appeared in some of the most iconic Scottish television programmes and films, including Shallow Grave, Pandemonium, River City, Outlander, Still Game, and of course playing DC Stuart Fraser in the iconic Taggart. Colin, hello, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? I'm brilliant, I'm brilliant. Thank, thank you so much for taking the time and coming and chat. It really means the world. Not at all, I'm looking forward to it. So just before we get started, how are you? How are you, you happy and healthy and well and everything? Yes, yeah, healthy, happy, yes, surviving. Uh, yeah. yeah, good. Yeah, can't complain at the moment. Good, good. I think that, that's all we can really ask for right now, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Um, so you're uh, a Dumbarton boy. You were born in Dumbarton, weren't you? Well, I yeah, I wouldn't say I'm really a Dumbarton. I, my parents, uh, my dad, when I was born, my dad worked at Glasgow Airport. He was a customs officer. Uh, so we lived in like Hardgate, which is in uh, Clyde Bank, sort of near Clyde Bank. Yeah. Um, and obviously I was born at the local hospital, which was the Vale of Leaven. But we then, my dad changed his job uh, and, well, he stayed within like the customs and excise, but he moved to Perth to become like a VAT inspector. So we moved to Perth when I was like two. So uh, literally Dumbarton was the place of my birth, but um, not really a connection as such. Uh, you know, I can barely remember living uh, in Hardgate and then uh, most of my memories, and you know, I would definitely say I'm a Perth boy rather than a Dumbarton boy. Well, I, th- I think I need to re- rephrase the question. So you're a Perth boy, Colin? <laughs> exactly. I <laughs> hope you've not uh, uh, chosen lots of questions about Dumbarton and David Byrne from Talking Heads and stuff. I'm not, I'm not that organised. I'm not that organised. So, Good. so growing up then, I mean, I mean, Perth's lovely. You must have a lot of. You must have had a great time growing up in Perth. Yeah, Perth was a great place to grow up. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, I was growing up in late seventies, early eighties. So yeah, you were. There was no phones. You were just out and about, came home for your tea, um, walked to school, walked home from school. Got the, you know, you were just on your own sort of thing, which was great. Um, this has been coming no... up a lot and chatting to a lot of people, because I'm, I'm the same as you. I was 76. I was born. Right. So it's all, you know, the, the, the amount of times that we were just out on the street mm-hmm. and when, wait till the street lights came on. And then as soon as yeah. the street lights came on, you're like, right, that's it. That's yeah. home time now. Yeah, so no, Perth's a nice place. I mean, it's got nice parks and, you know, we were lucky near us. There was a, like, a bit where we could play football and there was tennis courts and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I didn't really have to go very far um, to have, have fun uh, when I was a child and teenager. So growing up then, did you get, obviously if your, your dad worked at the airport and things, you maybe had the opportunity to explore a little bit more. But did you, when you were holidaying as a kid, was it around Scotland or was it abroad? Yeah, no, we didn't. We never went on a, I didn't fly on a plane until I was 18. <laughs> Uh, your no. dad went to the airport. <laughs> well, no, he'd moved, by that point he'd left the airport and he'd moved to Perth. All oh, right, of course to, he did. Yeah, you moved to he Perth. Was a bat inspector by that point. So uh, my older brother, he 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 was obsessed with planes because I think as a child he'd he my dad had been at Gatwick Airport and then Glasgow Airport. So he'd obviously spent so much time, and he became a pilot and joined the RAF. Uh, so wow. he was away from when I was maybe about five. Um, but no, I I didn't get on a plane till I was nineteen. So then holidays were, were travelling yeah, about Scotland. So my and... mom, yeah, my mum was from Ireland, so we would either go on holiday to Ireland to see her family, or we would go to places like Butlins uh, a couple of times. Uh, and then we would just mainly do, mainly do like day trips in Scotland. I don't actually ever remember really having like a Scottish holiday. I suppose though, when you, if you're in Perth, I mean, you're really central. You can get to yeah. anywhere really oh, yeah. nice and quickly always, from there. We would always be out for day trips and obviously went up to Pilocre a lot and uh, Kenmore uh, and all places like that around Creef. And, um, so, yeah, so we had lots of days out, but mostly around uh, some of the Pilocre area. 
That's lovely. That's lovely. Because the, the, the pit lockery, I have to say, is it's one place that me and my wife, for some reason, we always end up at pit lockery. It's and it's place. beautiful. It's a it's yeah. a lovely little place. Yeah. Well, my dad, uh, he grew up in Rosyth, and during the war, his so his mother was from Pitlochry, so his granny lived in Pitlochry, so he got evacuated to Pitlochry during the war to live with his right. granny. So obviously that had a big connection to him as a child, and because we were only 20, 22 miles down the road or whatever in Perth, and he had a cousin still there, so we would Pitlochry was a place we would certainly go to frequently uh, for day trips and visits and to see people. That's cool. That's cool. So obviously now as well as an actor in Scotland, obviously, I mean, probably people recognize you mostly from Taggart because you were, you were there for uh, a good while, but obviously you're, you must get a chance to play all around Scotland. Is there places where you go, I love it when I go there. I love it. Or filming. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mean I've been lucky? Um, I think so. Last year I went to last Christmas I went to Pitlochry to play Scrooge in a Christmas Carol, and I'd never worked at Pitlochry before, bizarrely. And I think when I went there, I'd worked out that that was pretty much every theatre in Scotland I'd played, and you know every sort of main stage, if you know what I mean. Obviously, the wow. village halls and things, but from like His Majesty Eden Court, a Festival Theatre, Lyceum. Tron, Sits, Theatre Royal, do you know what I mean? I'm, I've like managed, I think the Playhouse is the only one, but not really, hardly anyone gets to play the Playhouse. So I think, yeah, I've been lucky to, as I say, played pretty much every theatre from Inverness down to Stranraer, maybe. See, that's um, brilliant. That's very Yeah, it's cool. good. It's nice to have ticked all the but And obviously we're filming as well. I've filmed a lot of places. Um, so up as far as like Thurzo, um, and maybe down as far as, Berwick upon Tweed, which is actually in England. But so yeah, so no, I, I love Scotland, and I love. It's always an excuse to get away and get paid to go think, somewhere. I was going to say it's one of the things that probably us Scots are a little bit. We take it for granted, don't we? Because it's all, it's always so beautiful in green. Yeah, right? it might be horrible outside. I mean, we had. We've had thunder snow through know, here in Edinburgh the last two, which is which is incredible. The, my dogs are not enjoying it, but, I know. but it, it's it's something new. But at the same time, we we don't explore enough, really, do we? No, I did a play in oh God, twenty odd years ago at the Traverse called Passing Places uh, by Stephen Greenhorn, who went on to do like Sunshine and Leith and create River City. And I don't know if you know the play, but it's about two two boys from Motherwell that steal a surfboard. And they tried to get to Thurzo to sell it or to surf. Um, and they've never left Motherwell. And they travel a really circuitous way around Scotland to try and avoid the guy who they've stolen the surfboard from. And they <laughs> end up in like Malig and Mull. And, and on their journey, they realise that they are tourists in their own country. And they meet all these people. They meet a French guy, they meet a Canadian. And they're like, why are you here? You know, for, you know. So, so they're completely fish out of water. And they can't get their head around, you know, that people think Scotland's beautiful and have come all, have travelled all, you know, they, they want to get out of Motherwell and they can't understand why people have come to Scotland. And I think, you know, unless you do explore Scotland, you don't realise how amazing it is. And if, and if we had the weather, we wouldn't need to go anywhere for holidays. It's, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, I can't remember. I've, I've been fortunate enough to chat to quite a few people doing this series. And... The one thing that keep, they, everyone keeps saying as well is, mostly up north, we've got some spectacular beaches. Uh-huh. And I mean, like, beautiful, like, look like the Bahamas, that just, if you go in them, all your bits shrivel up inside you, you know what I mean? <laughs> but they, they look great. <laughs> yeah, they look, they look good. I, who was it? It was Zara Janjua. She was telling me that there's a beach up the north of Scotland that on the one day of the year where it's, you know, uh-huh. beautiful sunshine all these film companies go right today and they go out and they film these holiday adverts that are supposed to be oh, yeah, for yeah. some of the beaches in like the up in the hebrides and stormy and stuff which i've never been to and that's on my bucket list at the moment look out of this world you know what i mean they just look so good and in october we went up to the, the murray coast which i'd never been to so we were like a uh, lossy mouth a uh, all that bit um, it was just absolutely, absolutely amazing, the beaches. So yeah. lovely. 
So when you yeah. when you did used to go on holidays when you were younger, was there places that sort of stuck out and, and you've revisited as an adult, or, or is it, since you're obviously when you're working anyway, you're, you maybe you might have already went back to them. I think, as I say, I think Pilocri is the one place that, uh, because uh, it was a place that my dad meant a lot to him, and uh, we would go there a lot. And as I say, last year I was working there, and I've just been working there last week, actually. So, yeah, that's definitely somewhere. When I go back there, I feel as if I just feel at home there. I just love it. And you've got Ben Drackey above it. And I love walking over the, the, the suspension bridge and along the dam and up the salmon ladder and around Loch Fastily. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love it. But obviously, I love, I love going to Aaron. You know, and I take my kids. Like, we like to go camping in Aaron. And oh, you know, pretty much two or three times a year, we always have a, a kind of... Um, Airbnb, a kind of cottage type break in Scotland. We've got a dog, so you know we'll go away to either you know maybe Fife or up to Murray, or um, we, we stayed around Montrose last year, and the beaches there are amazing as well um, near Lawrence Kirk. So yeah, we're always looking for somewhere different to go. And you've got obviously quite a strong tie to to Glasgow with your work as well. Mm-hmm. Now, as an Edinburgh lad. I'm probably one of the few Edinburgh lads that I love Glasgow. I, I like going through to Glasgow, but I have to say I don't know it very well. I'm not. Yeah. It's been it's been the odd audition here or there that I've went through for, and you know it's like you're there, you audition, and then I'm back on the train coming back through. I don't get a chance. But you just, I mean, when you go through to Glasgow, is there places that you go? Oh, I have to go. I have to go visit there. Yeah. So obviously, growing up in Perth, I would split my time as a teenager and between Glasgow and Edinburgh. You know, family in Edinburgh. And, I did a lot with the Scottish Youth Theatre, so I was always going to Glasgow. And, um, like, I, I love Edinburgh, and I've got still got family in Edinburgh, and I love going to Edinburgh. I love the pubs, I love the festival, I love the streets. But I kind of love leaving Edinburgh as well. It's a strange thing that, because <laughs> I've never lived there, I, I like, I love being there, but, like, say you're doing a show at the Fringe, it's still quite like getting the train away. I still, you know, and I've been in Glasgow 30 years now, and, Doing a show like Tiger, I was in it for 15 years. I basically filmed every part of Glasgow. So Yeah, you must have done, yeah. Some of the best houses, you know, in the grandest uh, arts and crafts houses to like uh, tower blocks, to football grounds, to the city chambers. You know, I've, virtually every pub in Glasgow I've been in, filming in. Or, so I, I know Glasgow really well, and I'm, you know, and I'm really good at driving. Like, see if someone says, how did you get there? Well, I know how to do that. <laughs> and I know going from different locations to locations, I know all the shortcuts and things. So, you know, I, I like, you know, although I'm not, wasn't born in Glasgow, I absolutely love it. Do you know what I mean? I think it's like the greatest city, in, one of the greatest cities in the world. And I, I would, love Glasgow. I, would, I, love I would Glasgow. say it's the greatest city in Scotland. <laughs> because I, 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 will, I, I, will, will agree. I, I, because I'm not Glaswegian, I can say that as an outsider. You see, you can say that unbiasedly. I yes, suppose you yeah. you can say yeah. Whereas yeah. I'm always going to be biased, but I think Glasgow's got something that Edinburgh hasn't, and that's its humour. Yeah, yeah. And people talk to you. There's a gallusness to Glasgow that literally people will stop you in the street and people will chat to you. And in Edinburgh, I know it's a cliche, or you'll have had your tea. Um, you know, I, I know, I know. Family when they come to Glasgow, just oh, God, everyone's so friendly. Everyone speaks. People do, people do chat a, a lot more. Edinburgh folk would be going to we chat, um, but yeah, you, folk, folk really do stop and engage with you a lot more. I feel in Glasgow. I would and agree with that, though. A lot more than Perth or Fife or you know anywhere. Um, yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. I think, I think every city, every every area. In Scotland, everyone's always proud of where they're from. But I think Glasgow's got it in a way, and the the, the people have got it that it shines through a bit more. Right. I think it's think? like you know, Edinburgh's like European, and Edinburgh's like picture postcard. And I could understand tourists; anyone coming to Scotland would, would go to Edinburgh first. But you know, Glasgow's more. Cosmopolitan, maybe if, if that's the word, you know what I mean. It's more of a, it's more of a real city, if you know what I mean. Um, but the rough, the rough and the posh, and it's it's kind of got everything about it. And, um, so yeah, I, you know, and I and I don't like to be Glasgow's better than Edinburgh because, as I say, I love them both. It's just I've I've I've, I've lived in Glasgow, so 
Um, Everyone's got their preferences, though, and that's what it's supposed to be. I was chatting to Martel Maxwell a couple of oh. weeks ago, and she's uh, an ambassador, ambassador, ambassador for Dundee. Uh-huh. So she was she was talking so much about Dundee, and I have to say, and I think probably this is something that uh, a lot of us are guilty of as well. At least at this side of Scotland's guilty of it's Edinburgh, Glasgow, it's Edinburgh, Glasgow, it's Edinburgh, uh-huh. Glasgow. Dundee and Vanessa Aberdeen get a little bit missed out a little bit, and they're beautiful yeah. as well. Well, as I say, I grew up in Perth, so I always always like there was always a Perth Dundee sort of thing. In Perth, eh, when I was growing up, was obviously a bit more quaint and a bit more like la di da I would suppose but but see now going to Dundee Dundee is like it's such an amazing place do you know what I mean it's got the you know the V&A's now there you've got Dundee Rep which has done so well you've got the DCA you've got like an art school you've got university it's a proper student town you know what I mean it's got good bars it's, it's got such a buzz about it um, yeah, it does feel like I, in the last little while it's properly came to life, hasn't it? I think Dundee's, and I think Dundee's pushed far ahead of Perth. Um, you know, it's got the good restaurants and the, the really good hotels and stuff. And I think, you know, Perth lost a lot of its good shops, like McCune's, which was like a department store, it closed. And uh, yeah, I certainly I certainly feel any time I've been to Dundee recently, there's such a buzz about the place. Um, yeah. And I would, you know, I mean, I would encourage my, like, you know, you start talking about university stuff to your kids and, Dundee would be a place I would say you should think about that. I'd just say anywhere that's got a statue of Desperate Dan in the middle of it, then it's good to be good. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so when you, uh, as you were growing up and you were getting to explore all these places, uh, we were kind of touching on. Um, d- d- I'm sorry, I've, I've, tra- I've went off track. So a different question came into my head. We were talking about growing up um, and playing all these sort of games and out and about and out in the streets. Perth must have been beautiful for that sort of thing it's a lovely area it's a lovely friendly area yeah Perth's a brilliant place to grow up and it's got you know you've obviously got the two big giant parks you've got the north and the south inch and you, you know there's cricket and golf and rugby and I mean all the sports are there and you've got Canoel Hill which uh, is a brilliant country walk and it's got an amazing view that looks right down the Tay towards Dundee uh, and you know you're 10 miles to Dunkeld you're 20 miles to Pitlochry, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're close to the Trossachs, you're close to Creef. It's a, it's a great, uh, Perth's a brilliant place to use as a base if you want to travel Scotland. Um, you know, you can get up to Glen Shee and all that and skiing as well. Uh, yeah, but I, mean, I, I love going back to Perth. I, I don't have any family left, so it feels quite strange now when I go back that I've got this connection to it, but the only thing I can do is go to the football. <laughs> this is some, I, I, who's, I've chatted to, this is something that's popped up the last couple of people I've talked to. I was chatting to Fred McCauley and I was chatting to um, Grant O'Rourke from Outlander. And both of them were telling me where they grew up, they're no longer there. And you obviously yeah. you're the same. You know, the family wasn't there and they weren't there anymore. Uh, so if they did go back, it was nostalgic and it was visiting. Going, oh, that's the house I grew up in, things like that. Yeah. My mum and dad, are still in the house I grew up in. So I don't ha- you know, if I can go back and see them, and fair enough, my old bedroom in there is full of boxes. It's not yeah. a bedroom anymore. So, But I don't have that. Oh, I, I can, I can it's there. It's hard. Can- see, when, see when your parents leave, leave, the, leave the family home, it's, it's, it's awful. It almost feels like a bereavement, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like losing that connection. And, um, you know, so maybe about 15... 16, 17 years ago, my dad left Perth to go to move to Edinburgh. Um, and yeah, it was like, oh, I can't go back to Perth now. I can't. And you know, and that stops you maybe seeing friends at Christmas and you just, that connection goes. Um, and yeah, I, I do. I, as I say, I, I go back to Perth now to go to football or, um, or even, you know, my mum and dad are both buried in Perth. So my dad died in April. So I now make a point of trying to get up and go and, visit their grave and put flowers on it, which I did last week. So, yeah, so that, that that's that's maybe a good connection there. Uh, having that, I'll make more of a point of going back. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's always funny. Your nostalgia is a funny thing, isn't it? When it pulls you back somewhere and mm-hmm. memories always, they, they seem to come, come out of nowhere sometimes in the smallest things. Absolutely, sparkles. yeah. So uh, if someone was going to come, I mean, obviously, as I was saying to you earlier, there's the, the, I'm very fortunate that the people that watch the channel, there are, 
they're all over the world, you know, they're Canada, America, Australia, either with Scottish heritage or expats or um, a lot of expats actually who've moved away as kids and uh -huh. never came back, which um, I suppose it's something that you can't imagine really if you've never really moved away. But if someone was going to come back, what would be your top tips for them to come over? Of where to visit? Well, of anything. Of anything, you know, the, the, what the, so far the biggest one that people have been saying is get midgy spray and wear a cagoule. But <laughs> hey, I would certainly, I would certainly try and uh, uh, go up a hill. I, I've been doing a lot of like hill walking recently, and and you know, Monroe's. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Monroe bagger. I'd rather walk up a hill for the view and for the walk. If it happens to be over three thousand uh, feet, great. If it was. Two feet below, I would still do it if it, if it was worth it. A lot of people just want to take the, the Monroes off. So, yeah, maybe go come somewhere like the Trossachs and go. One of my favourite hills is a place called Ben Ann, uh, which is about 1,500 feet. So it's, it's, it's about an hour up and you park at the bottom. It's just uh, out of like Aberfoyle and you can get up it in about, as I say, an hour and it looks onto Loch Catron. To, and then on towards like Loch Lomond, and it is the best, the best view for the easiest walk in Scotland. That's that's a beautiful. We're we're spoiled for views, really yeah. here, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so I, I was chatting to well, actually a lots of people I was chatting to, but I think it was Barbara Dixon, and she lives in um, North Edinburgh north of uh -huh. uh, Newtown, a sort of area, but she's from Fife and things, and she says that she, she stays there so that she can get the view, looking over the fourth, you know what I mean? And I, we were chatting about how sometimes the place looks like a watercolour. Yeah. And it, it's like no, none, none of these filters on your phone or anything like that. No, know? no, I know. I've seen myself that, take pictures and you're like, honestly, that's what it looks like. I know, you don't need to do anything. It's like, you know, and also like you go around Loch Lomond, there's uh, uh, the north end, there's like Ben Vorlick and Ben Vane, and uh, they are brilliant. They're Monroe's and you can go up there. And they're, you know, I mean, they're maybe about a two, three hour climb up, but you can see like three locks there. So it's like the three lock view, they call it. And you can see like uh, Loch Lomond, I think Loch Arklet, and then to Loch Catron. So you can stand on the top of those mountains and see three separate locks. It's absolutely... And it's free, you know, yeah. no one charges you to go to these places. You know, yeah, as long as you take your rubbish away with you, it's free. And it's see at the moment, just like, although we can't really travel too far, uh, when, once lockdown eased a bit, it was like, right, let's get up a hill. And, uh, you know, and I, I love that. I love uh, going up a hill. Is that I, something I you always did? Just go out, walk, or was it, is this, a, you know, something you've just discovered? Hey. It was my dad would be very keen. He would take us up on rows and we would go up places like Shahalian and Ben Vraki and Ben Lors. Uh, I think we did Ben Nevis as well. Um, and then no, maybe laterally we would pass one of my friends and I took called Ian Robertson. He's got really into it. So we'll maybe do one kind of every month or so. Uh, and it's a chance of, you know, catching up and escaping and seeing about the country and getting fish and chips at the end of it and just getting fresh air and exercise. And I, I'd much rather do that than go to a gym. I'd rather yeah. walk 12 miles up a hill than go on a treadmill. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair enough. That's fair. If you can get that view instead of just having a screen in front yeah. of you for a change. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do gyms. Uh, I have to, I've tried. I've tried, you know, but it's just I get bored. I get yeah. bored. Uh, I like to sort of round things off with what I like to call difficult questions for Scots. Uh-huh. Yeah, so shortbread or whiskey? Oh, sorry, shortbread or tablet? I'm jumping ahead. Shortbread or tablet? Oh, that's a hard one. These, this is where it gets serious now. Yeah, if you, I mean, I, I love both of them. So if my life depended on it, it would probably have to be tablet. Just because it's that, virtually all sugar, whereas um, shortbread's got a bit of butter and a bit of flour. So you have to go for the pure sugar. So it, it's funny. It's a, it's shortbread normally wins because everyone's sort of like, oh, I, I like tablet, but I just can't eat a lot of it. Yeah, well, I could. Uh, I, I would give it a go. <laughs> me, and my, me and my wife tried to make it a little while ago because my gran, as I'm sure most Scots did, used to make brilliant tablet. You know, yeah, it's, a, it's an acquired art. It's acquired art, I think. 
it really is. We tried to make it. I didn't realize how much, you know, stirring you had to do because my wife jokes that I ended up making souplet instead of tablet. Yes. It was just, yeah. it was essentially... The thing is, uh, even if it crystallizes a bit, it still tastes good, but you really want it that smooth, with no sugar granules in it. Uh, uh, my wife and daughter have done it and it can be a hit. When you get it right, it's amazing. And sometimes it just doesn't go. I, I, don't, I still don't know what the absolute secret to it is. I, 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 it must be in that sort of just grinding yeah. away for ages. Yeah. It must be, yeah. it must be. And what I, was, what I started to jump onto a little bit, Iron Brewer whiskey. Whiskey. No too much sugar. It's too, it's too much sugar in Iron Brew. But yet tablet is okay. <laughs> well, there's a lot of sugar in uh, shortbread. Uh, yeah, I'm not like... I, I, Iron brew's all right. I, I quite like a, a diet iron brew sometimes if you're thirsty or a bit fuzzy about the head. Uh, but well, it's a, it's a, it's I a brilliant I hangover cure. Choo- I wouldn't choose to have like a glass of iron brew like in a cafe it, or anything or in the house. It can, or, make your, it can give your teeth that fuzzy feel a little yeah, bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, an occasional glass would be all right. Whereas whiskey, if I had to, I could, I could drink a whiskey every night. If, if you had to, if you were forced to. to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, haggis, deeps and tatties or mints and tatties? Uh, so that's quite an interesting one because I'm, uh, I don't eat meat. So I'm vegetarian, but uh, I absolutely love veggie haggis. Veggie yeah, haggis yeah. is beautiful. My wife's a yeah. vegetarian, yeah. and she, which essentially makes me vegetarian most of the time. Cause, well, it tastes you know, the same. As someone who ate, ate, ate normal haggis growing up, um, it's like one of these dishes that really good mash and really good like uh, turnips and like maybe a whiskey sauce as well. See, once you have that combination and you get the oatmeal-y, peppery, veggie haggis. Uh, Simon Howie's is my favourite. That's my favourite uh, one you can buy in the shops, uh, which is uh, fairly local to Perth there in Dunning. So, uh, yeah, veggie haggis. And I would say to anyone who's unsure about haggis because of what's in it, go for a veggie one. Yeah, I would say the same. I think it's beautiful. It did, yeah. It's Like I said, I, I, I'm, I still eat meat, but I find myself eating less and less and less just because my wife's a vegetarian. So who wants to cook two meals? You know exactly. I mean? so, um, and half the time that we go, not, go out now as well, because veggie food seems to be getting better and better and better. It's like they're discovering how to you know create more tastes with it all half the time i'm choosing the veggie option now because it's beautiful well you also need to just have to say you can now get vegetarian lawn sausage you can yeah. get vegan vegan scotch pies made by bells who do like the normal scotch pies so yeah there's like great you can get a greg's vegan sausage roll um, yeah. so yeah it's not it's, it's it's literally not a hassle anymore you know for so long i would go to football and you would want a pie and you know you would Sometimes get a macaroni pie, but normally you would have no option. It would just be meat pie or nothing. And you'd be at the football star and eating a packet of crisps while all your mates were having a, a, a steak pie or whatever. But now things have really changed. Dude, uh, I love a macaroni and a lot, pie. And a lot of, as I say, Scottish delicacies come as vegetarian or vegan now. Yeah, yeah. But I have to say, you, you put it in my head, I do love a macaroni pie. <laughs> yes, macaroni pie is a, a, a great thing. <laughs> Um, last but by no means least, um, caramel wafer or tonics tea cake? Uh, well, that's a hard one as well. Tonics tea cake, I think. It's, this one's a proper, this is the one that everyone finds difficult. It's, it's really ending up as a 50 50 split, this one. Yeah, because um, as much as I love a caramel wafer, there are a lot of things that are quite similar to it. So there's maybe other chocolate bars that are not dissimilar, other biscuits that are not dissimilar, whereas a tonics tea cake there's nothing else like that yeah. it's completely unique so it's 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 uniqueness that would swing me towards it it, it is beautiful alan stewart was chatting and he was saying he was he has one at the interval of every panto does he he was telling me he has one at the in every panto and a couple of years ago when andy took ill and he didn't do the panto he sent him a massive box. He just went, there you go. <laughs> for boxes, the, yeah, yeah. Huge box of Tonics tea cakes. And he, I don't think he said he got through them. He ended up giving them away at the cast and everything because it was oh, so big. Uh, he, he loves them. Yeah, no, they, they are fantastic. 
Well, this has been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing your time and coming no on problem. and chatting with me. It genuinely means the world to me. I hope everyone's healthy and safe in your family. And thanks for sharing your time. No problem. Thanks, Tony. That was lovely there to chat to Colin. He was so genuinely nice and friendly. I had a moment or two to chat to him after the interview as well. And he was so lovely. I hope you enjoyed that interview. Colin's one of these actors that... Uh, you really recognise of Scottish TV, especially because he was in Taggart for a while. But I loved him in Shallow. He only had a, 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 a little part in Shallow Grave, but it really stands out to me. And I really enjoyed it. That's one of my favourite films of all time. So it was, it was such a pleasure to get a chance to chat to him. Hope you enjoyed that. We're going to take a little break for Scottish Memories just now till after the new year. So I hope you won't miss us too much. If you want, why don't you go back and listen to all the other interviews or go check them out on YouTube. They are all there for you to watch and listen to. But I hope you're all happy and safe and healthy. Until next time. Bye humans. Music